And now, third-hand smoke survivor, Adam Carolla. Yeah, get it on. Got to get it on the church. But then I'm ending to get it on. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for telling a friend. We love that about you. Jim Norton is back in the studio, and he has brought his wife, Nikki, who goes by Nikki Norton. Yes. Good alliteration. Yeah. See, I didn't like it. She liked it. We went back and forth. It, it, it's Nikki Norton sounded too much. We didn't love it at first, but it seems to it, it seems to be memorable. People remember the alliteration. I didn't like it at first. Well, and then I'm also your wife, so I was thinking the traditional way was to take his last name. So. Yeah. yeah, you guys are very provincial, traditional type couple. Yes. And I know Jim's set in his ways, and he comes from a kind of, I don't want to say overly religious, but uh, conservative. <laughs> so I, met, I met your parents. They're very old-fashioned. Oh, yeah, you did. Where did you meet my parents? With Leno? Yeah. You did meet my oh, parents. Oh, you met Jim's parents? Oh, yes, wow. I did. It, it was uh, revelatory wow. for me. I uh, were playing the Borgata That's right. in New Jersey, and um, I went backstage to see Jay. So, you know, Jay was playing the mega room, and I was playing the outhouse. <laughs> you know, Borgata has more than one room, you know. And uh, I, I really went in there to suck up to him because – I said to him, uh, Jay, what, what are you staying the night at the Borgata? Because I got to drive back to Philly and we got to catch a Southwest flight back to Burbank at eight in the morning. He's like, no, I fly out tonight. And I was like, oh, you're flying yeah. out tonight. We're back to, back to Burbank, back to Van Nuys. He's like, yeah. And I'm like, you know, I live pretty close to that airport. <laughs> He's like, yeah, hop a ride, you know, so that, but your parents, Jim, were hanging out backstage with Jay. And in his green room. They did, they did get back. I remember when they went. And how many years ago is this? This is like... 12 years, well, 13 years okay. ago. And yeah. uh, my impression of your parents was just how normal they, they seemed. They are very nice, normal people. His um, parents are the nicest, <coughs> sweetest, kindest. They're so nice, they almost make me want to cry. And I it's kept, crazy. I kept resisting the temptation of saying, what What happened? Yeah, you know, exactly. What would you do to the boy? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who babysat him while you nice people were working? <laughs> right. Who fumbled with his little hiney? Yeah. No, I understand. People meet my parents are very disarming because they're, really, they're genuinely lovely people. I'm very yes. lucky. They love Nikki. They've been very accepting of me as a person. Like I couldn't have done better with a family, mm -hmm. and um, and then you know the, some of the the things I've done in my life, people are just shocked I came from those people. I suppose if we ever met, like if Rob Zombie's parents were like, "This is Sheila and Irv Zombie," <laughs> and there's a guy at a crew cut and he's wearing a cardigan, that would have been a little more surprising. <laughs> yeah. But or Hans and Brenda Hitler, and they're right. just really nice, kind of liberal people. Sure. Artsy. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, is that a new star, David? Yeah. Let me put a polish on it. <laughs> um, so I was I was surprised at how normal, quote unquote, yeah. that the parents were, and uh, how um, Jim had lived an unorthodox life, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. But how are they with this situation? I mean, they love Nikki. I, I told my parents I'd met her year, I mean, I think it was around 2017 when we first started talking, and I told them, uh, mm. you know, I went to dinner with them and told them, hey, I met somebody, and it's, you know, I, I really like her, and I want to pursue well, it. Well, his mom always knew that I was trans, but I think she didn't ask you until, well, not recently, but she didn't ask you until a little later on, you know, are you are you gay? What is this? What? So, I Yeah, remember. they're older, yeah. But she's... <laughs> <laughs> she, she wanted to know. It's okay. But they have been very accepting. They love Nikki. Extremely yeah. accepting. They, so, they've given up on grandchildren from this end. It's just not <laughs> happening. And they know it's not happening. This is why we got married. I had to just prove to them I was not having children. Yeah. His sister will talk about having another baby. And from us, it's just silence. Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. It's like, go ahead. Uh, but they love Nikki. They're happy that we're happy. Oh, okay. Yeah. They're very, very uh, open and accepting. Yeah. But anybody who wasn't, like, anybody who was shitty about it, I just wouldn't have interacted with. Like, there was nobody, mm -hmm. I didn't need anybody to be accepting. Jim of is it. the realest man that I've ever met. He's taken me, ever since I met him, he's taken me everywhere publicly. He's the first man that I ever, ever went on a date with. And I've had an ex boyfriend, too, who I was with for a while. He never took me on a date. No one's ever taken me on a date. Oh. I could see that. Yeah, a lot of guys yeah. maybe, maybe trying to keep it secret or yeah. not yeah, but nervous to introduce them to friends, family. Oh yeah, no, I was never I was never nervous about friends or family like and, and Jim friends are fine. Literally doesn't give a shit. He's told me I'll cut out anyone if they don't respect this or at least or if they change towards you. Yeah. 
You notice little changes in people, but I understand that, hey, look, people grapple with whatever they grapple with. So I'm not, I'm not an idiot about it. Like if somebody is, if I see that they're trying to come to terms with what it means, or, okay, fine. But if yeah. anybody was outwardly ever rude to Nikki or was disapproved, I mean, there's just no need for me to have them. I'm 55. Yeah. Like, well, I don't need them. We know Jimmy and Jim, I should say. Does anyone ever call you Jimmy? You know, my Aunt Gail calls me Jimmy. A few people do. My mother calls me Jimmy. Uh, in the business, nobody, but I don't mind it. Uh, so we know Jimmy's arc pretty well, but uh, we don't know Nikki's very well. So let's go through your chronology a little well, bit here. I'm from Norway. I lived in Norway my whole life. Um, and then when I met Jim, um, I mean, we moved to Canada together for two years. Oh, I didn't even know um, that. I had a very long immigration history because back in Norway, I smoked weed once. Mm -hmm. And because of that, I got a $100 fine. And I just signed it, didn't know what to do. And because of that, it got on my record. And I didn't think it would be a problem or anything, but I remember when I went to the embassy, the guy's like, you can't get in, you're a convicted criminal. So yeah. now you need a waiver, which is insane because in the federal schedule list, weed is number one, heroin is like number two or three, I think. Yeah, it's, right. a, it's, a, it's, so, it's, a, it's a, what's it called, a class, uh, a class one uh, or narcotic, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. So cost, uh, uh, immigration nightmare. Yeah. Oh, geez. Five years. Yes. We could have just sent an but, arms dealer and traded her. Right? Yeah, yeah. But I'm very rural uh, farm girl. Um, so, uh, well. you, you, so you start out <laughs> in, in Norway as a, as a rural farm girl, but yes. you start out as a rural farm boy, right? Well, yes. In, in well, Norway. Yes. I was never a man, though. A lot of people call me a man. I never got to be a man. I was just a boy mm -hmm. because I transitioned when I was 14, so I never made it to a manhood. Well, in Jim's throat, but... <laughs> <laughs> uh, she's a charmer. <laughs> <laughs> a little uh, bald. <laughs> so, uh, so full post-op trans... Post-op? Pre-op. Shame on you. I don't know all the... I, Shame what, on you, Adam. Is that, I don't is that know old that, school? Oh, my God. If you if you get a beautiful vehicle, do you take the tires and throw them out? No, you enjoy the vehicle. You enjoy the... I love Nikki as she is. No, no change. Oh, no. So, all the... the <laughs> Former male bits. She has a dick. Okay, that's I what I. That's balls. what I. That's what I wanted to say. Are you okay with me phrasing it like that? Yes. <laughs> okay. I've gotten to the point where I'm so comfortable with who I am, and I thought that I would have a lot of surgeries because that's kind of the trans code, I guess. So I thought mm -hmm. I would be having a lot of stuff done in the face and the boobs, and maybe even down there, just look good in a pair of jeans. Mm -hmm. I'm just happy that I've come to a point where I'm comfortable with being who I am, whatever that is—a transsexual, a trans. Yeah. Whatever so. It is. You know, back in the day, because I did Love Line, you know, and we had all the terminology. We had uh, transvestite, we had cross dresser, and then we had pre op and post op transvestite, and we had all these lanes. Right. But we don't really do the lanes anymore. So I'm never clear exactly what lane people are in. I'm, I'm sure. crystal clear now. Yeah. Like, yeah. I still don't know Caitlyn Jenner. Do we know what I'm assuming tr uh, definitely transgender and I'm assuming post-op. I believe post-op she said she is. Um, but with Nikki's surgeries, I was always like, hey, it's up to you what you want to do. Like, I love you as you are. I discouraged her from doing surgeries. I'm like, if you ever want to do it, I'll, I'm, I love you, so do what you want. But yeah. I, I love her as she is, and I didn't want her to change anything. I'm like, you don't, there's nothing I think you need to change. You don't need anything on your face. You, nothing needs to change well, unless just, you really want it. I'm just happy that I got to the point where I was comfortable with that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Good. Just uh, Caitlin is post op. It says on my board. But I, I believe I look so. At yeah. Caitlin is like an OG because she was doing this back, like, and I don't know, Caitlin, but she was doing this like forty years ago as a cross dresser. She said, or just dressing up. So, in her doc, she was secretly like yeah. cross dressing. Mm -hmm. You know, in between uh, Olympic trials, yeah, and and things like, like that. Weedy's photo shoots. <laughs> yeah, it's a oh, tough I, life. I think she's a very legit transsexual. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. And who is the, I mean, and I know Caitlin kind of walks this line because she's, she's sort of pro-transsexual, but then she gets on the wrong side politically well, of Kate, a lot of Caitlin people. Caitlin did a reality yes. show. I don't know if you guys remember, but I remember she did a reality show and I thought it was wonderful. The idea it was all other trans girls on the show. And I kind of feel like they attacked Caitlin, like they, because Caitlin was political in a way, I guess, maybe a bit more conservative. 
but who cares? I mean, and they were all trying to lecture her on how to be trans. Meanwhile, she's cross trans for how long? 30 years? Yeah. So, and then the show just flopped, and then everyone started to just kind of think that now she's this political right. figure, and I guess that's what she is now. She kicked the door in for a lot of people. For a she lot of she people. put it in the conversation, and then people are still going to lecture her. And on, when, on how to be when Caitlyn Jenner went on the Vanity Fair article, I swear to God, it changed transgender or this trans world forever. Because when she did the Vanity Fair, every radio station in the world, micro countries, were talking about Caitlyn Jenner. So how? at that point, you couldn't turn, shut the door. So we talked about Jim's parents being open minded. Uh, how yes. about your parents? Very open-minded. Well, my mom was a bit confused when she found out because she's like, what are you, a transvestite? And I'm like, well, no, I want to be a girl. She was very confused, I think. But she's been very accepting. My whole family has been. And they're relatively more old school, I guess. But they've been very accepting. I meant with Jim. He's a mess. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, we don't mind the transition yeah. with this blinking middle. <laughs> We're blinging this fucking, this, this man with natural tits in the house. Get rid of him. <laughs> Are they cool with Jim too? Yes, they love Jim. Wow. Yes. Yeah. This is a, this is a, a mitzvah because this is pretty rare that both sets of parents, because yeah. there's a, there's a lot to digest on both sides of this aisle. Sure. You know, you're yeah. both pretty non-conventional people and there's reasons why conventional parents would not be is accepting with open arms for very a lot of different 100%. reasons yes. and they're both good yeah and it's weird like the thing with us is our, our marriage is a pretty normal marriage we bicker about the same things everybody else does our relationship is fairly it, it's not this kind of special interest thing that we're always talking about issues and you know, more people who like trans women, just be with the person you like. Like, that's there's no messaging from us. It's just that. If you like somebody, be with that person. If you're in yeah. love, marry the person. Uh, because we want to show people that we're just a regular couple. And I guess that's not the message that they want in Hollywood. They want some extreme bullshit. Uh, but we're funny together. We have a great life together. And, and I, I'm very happy that we're married. I've never thought I'd like being married. But also I also can't it. think of any other guy who's in the industry who's married a transgender. Maybe behind closed door, but I don't know. Can't think of one. Yeah, you don't hear it a lot. I mean, I can't um, think of one. Me neither. So, yeah, can't um, think of one, Jim. I don't know. I can't. Uh, I can't think. Uh, I don't know. No, I can't think of. Can't I can't think, think of, of anyone. But eventually, you'll get to the point. Where, like uh, Pedro Pascal, uh, his name is right. Pedro yeah. Pascal. Bro, I think he has a trans sister. He brought to an award show, and they wrote about that, which is great. But it will eventually come to the point where they won't write about it because it'll be common. People will just be bringing trans wives and girlfriends and sisters but and you, brothers to award shows, and it won't seem like anything. But when at all. people were becoming more, when was when we became more accepting to be gay, like now people are starting to also get trans people in their families too because it's becoming more and more common so yeah yeah i think there's a basketball player or something that's a trans daughter Dwayne wade i think Dwayne yes. wade has yes. a trans daughter and um, magic johnson has like a oh yeah oh, no, i don't know if he's, i don't know if he has a daughter or like his son gay son or did he transition i just don't know very flamboyant, flamboyant. Yeah. Yeah. Son, yeah yeah but, and and uh the, the will and jada pinkett smith have some th things that are sort of straddle the line yes. in the kids department as well. They have a very yeah, they have a very interesting life, um, <laughs> to say the least. Yeah. We should get you guys together and see whose life is more interesting. <laughs> yeah, I guess uh, I, I don't understand their dynamics. Like I, I don't quite like I know our dynamics, but I don't know what they're. There's something that we don't know about them. Like, cause I don't like Jada Pinkett Smith at all. I don't either. But I'm like, there's something she's doing that she's keeping private for Will. Like, there's something Absolutely. there. There's a reason mm. that we just don't know. And if we knew, we'd probably go, oh, okay, I shouldn't have been so harsh on her. I don't know. So, um, so Nikki, you're you're a webcam model yes. in Norway. How does what is that lifestyle like? Um, well, when I was younger, I kind of realized that there's no way that I can have a normal job behind a cashier in Norway and see some sad or rude Norwegian face. I was like, this is what I'm gonna do. And I started when I was 18 and honestly gave me a lot of opportunities in life. It was amazing to me, it was good. She stopped like five years ago, maybe more, but I was fine with it. Like, I mean, I, I wouldn't want her doing it in our relationship, but I mean, I've seen a lot of the videos but and this I was, was more than pleased. Before people went on. <laughs> so I quit right before OnlyFans became a thing. Yeah. Uh -huh. So I feel kind of vintage now because when I did it with a webcam, now everyone is doing an HH, extra HD on their iPhones. I feel like, you know, now everyone's kind of thinking the same mentality that I did when I was 16, 17, 18. Because a lot of these young people, 
I think, planning to do so. You see how many people are on OnlyFans. I should uh, say there's a show. It's uh, Nikki and Jim. It's available on YouTube, so you can watch that. And also, Jim, of course, has uh, dates all over the place. Now, you know, tour, Jim Norton. Dot com is where you go for all the bells and the tickets and everything. So, uh, Nikki, you come from a faraway land. Yeah. Uh, do you get Jim's humor? I didn't at Good first. Good question. But now I I'm do, from I here think. and I don't get the shit. No. <laughs> no, no. Neither does anybody else. That's why they always curtain off that back half of the comedy club. So. I enjoy that his humor was so mean. That I like that. <clears throat> yeah, Norwegian but, people can be a bit gloomy. It doesn't translate all the time. Nikki's very literal, so sometimes like we'll joke about something, or I'll, <laughs> I'll joke, and I'll you know like, uh, and, and she was like, "No, you won't." And I'm like, well, I, "I know, I'm kidding." So it's, 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 it's like a literal thing, but yeah. that's the Norwegian thing. They're very, very kind of stoic literal people yeah. well when we were talking about this on the air a few weeks ago or maybe even last week where we were we were uh, uh, we were sort of uh, vexed because every time one of those happiness reports comes out it's always norway and all the yeah. countries that Sweden. are sort of yeah. alike Finland, you know what i mean Finland, yeah. and then everyone always says no one smiles there and they don't like dancing or something mm -hmm. and then you kind of go well wait how are the happiest people see why do they seem dour i it's very true i mean i went home to norway recently three months ago just to go home and as soon as i got on the plane the whole energy just shifts and it's like being with these half German mugs like you're just always just I don't know I could just feel the whole vibration was just I don't know but it really is a thing the Nordic people can be very just uh which I, know, I listen I'm, I'm fine with miserable but why do they get the mantle of most happy shouldn't well, that I go to Rio de Janeiro yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah absolutely they are very happy in but Brazil it's a, but it's a very clean country and we don't treat politics the same I mean I feel like of course we have our issues but I feel we're very gathered as people if if that makes sense yeah you're sort of unified yes i would say so yeah like does ev is everyone there issued like a gun from the government but nobody shoots a up a school no guns oh who is the is it where is you can look for it somewhere or oh, maybe it's sweden yeah there's no guns in norway really right no no citizens no guns I, I don't mean like handguns i mean like rifles like in case oh. a war oh, breaks yeah, out sure. kind of thing yeah many well many people have rifles and go hunting but there's not many shootings in norway at all yeah saying so a lot of rifles but not so many not sweet. so many shoot schools getting shot up right sweden has a lot of shootings oh really yeah yeah well, it's right. getting worse yeah switzerland has a high rate of gun ownership but i'm not oh so Maybe it's Switzerland. Yeah, maybe I'm thinking of, I, and I'm an ugly American. I don't <laughs> know what the fuck. I barely know the difference. You know, for, I mean, it's like I, I work construction. This guy's from Honduras. Yeah, all right, Mexican. I got it. <laughs> you know, yeah. I mean, you yeah. just there's too many. Yeah, there are too many. All you to beautiful keep track Europeans of. look the same. Yeah, that's, uh, that's right. Alaska and Hawaii are lucky. We acknowledge them. If it's not in the freaking 48 <laughs> continental, yeah. I don't. I don't know it. <laughs> So um, you guys have been married for how long? Two years. Now? Two years. A little over two years. We were got engaged in uh, f uh, the uh, end of May, May of uh, 2019, um, and then uh, got married finally uh, two years ago here in, in actually New York. How'd you propose? Got down on one knee. It was because uh, Nikki was. Uh, we she went to Ca Canada. Was amazing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, when I got down on one knee, she got her hopes up. <laughs> <laughs> well, I actually threw up. <laughs> <laughs> got down on one knee and got poked in the eye. Yeah, I was like, oh, 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 oh. I was like come on, not now. I'm talking. <laughs> no, we um, we wound up uh, going to Vancouver because she we, we I put Nikki up in Canada, and so I could drive up after radio. I would drive the six hours to Montreal every mm -hmm. weekend and see her, and then and drive home Sunday. To make wow. it clear, we I relocated to Canada because there they didn't have an issue with the weed things so yes. they just let me right in mm -hmm. here it took me 1500 days because of that they were great in Canada they just allowed it so she was staying in Canada on a tourist holiday which she was allowed to do working holiday visa yes. all Europeans can get it so I went there and we flew to Vancouver and I knew I was going to propose I got a ring I did everything and that was very traditional got down on one knee and proposed and it was really nice and I she want a said priest yes. in our wedding I want no, a real no, priest no 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 Mine. she's more traditional than I, I do but uh, yeah, an hour later, she was vomiting off the bed. I guess you had food poisoning or something, but it was a great, great Well, it was day. a reaction, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably. I thought I told myself food poisoning. <laughs> but uh, yeah, and she said yes, and uh, we wanted to wait until we were in the States to do it. I didn't want to do it in Canada. Uh, so, Jim, I see you pop up on uh, Gutfeld quite a bit. Mm -hmm. 
And I don't know, do you feel, I, I, you know, maybe, maybe this is um, a little bit of my own experiences, but, you know, people, when you end up on Gutfeld, you end up on Fox, yeah. then everyone goes, oh, you're right winger sure. with your right wing talking points and stuff like that. And I always go, no, I'm just not welcome on CNN Thank anymore. You. Yeah. I mm-hmm. would go on sure. CNN. They won't have, you know, there's a, a, an ever growing list. You know, you can join Mark Garagas, attorney. You can join Dr. Drew. You can join myself where everyone accuses you of going over to Fox. But we didn't go over to Fox. We got pushed over to Fox because CNN and the other outlets don't want us on anymore. And we got a book to sell. Yeah. Yeah. Dates to plug. But so you end up going there. Yes. And I've been going on Fox on Gutfeld's show for about 16 years. Ever since 2007 when Red Eyes started. I've done Hannity. Uh, I've done a bunch of things on Fox. They've always been cool to me on Fox. Um, and if CNN wanted to have me on and to be funny, I'd go on and be funny on CNN. I'd go on Joy Reid's show if she asked me on MSNBC, Chris Cuomo. Mm. Invite me on. I'm happy to come on and try to be funny on your show. But uh, Fox has been great to me. And if people interpret that as that's my politics, then people are fucking stupid. Yeah. I never care if they, th- they say that. Well, they say two things. They go, you go to Fox, they hand you your talking points, which they never do. Never, not once. They give you the subject, and then you say whatever you want about the subject. They don't give you your talking points. And then they go, you're just, you're just parroting right-wing talking points and hammering checks. And I'm like, you, nothing about that sentence is correct. All lie. There is no talking points, and there is, sadly, no check. Yeah. That is, but I, it's insane that they can't wrap their mind around that concept. You know what Gutfeld said to me once, and it was a great compliment, because I, I find politics, I'm very bored with everybody just virtue signaling and pontificating and thinking they're fucking warriors in a cultural battle. They just Everyone's a dick. Gutfeld said to me one time, he goes, I had you on for so many years, and I don't know what your politics are. Right. And I don't hide them, mm. but my job is to be funny and make fun of whatever the situation is, not to parrot a talking point or not to get a round of applause for a bunch of people that vote a certain way. Like, I don't care if I bother conservatives when I'm on Fox. They don't ever tell me what not to make fun of. And they know I'm married to Nikki. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and they can have whatever opinions they have on that. I would never say anything shitty about my wife. And if somebody says anything bad about my wife, I would, I would combat that. Yeah, I, I've found that they, they try to paint the Fox crew as uptight, conservative, judgmental, sort of Christians or something. And yeah. the reality is, is th- they're all very nice yep. and have no judgments about lifestyles. I've met Gutfeld. I've never gotten, just from watching, I haven't gotten that impression. But I can understand. It feels like very split, like you have to pick a side here in America. It does feel that way. You know who sent me? So many of my friends have not said anything about Nikki and I. You know who sent me a really lovely message? Nick DiPaolo. Mm-hmm. You know right. Nick? Nick's sure. conservative. Nick is ferocious. He's a fucking a brilliant... Well, as a acerbic joke writer. I mean, Nick can be fucking... And you've sent me this really beautiful message and congratulating me. Dice sent me a great message. All these guys you wouldn't expect it from are like, hey, I'm so happy you're happy. It is a little weird to see that there's not more rainbow people included because he did marry one. I mean, isn't that what an, all you allies are talking about? <laughs> like, where are you? I mean, no I, one's saying anything. I, uh, in, so in Nick DiPaolo, you know, he writes for Gottfeld yep. as well. But... I think the deal, and maybe this is what you're experiencing, Nikki, is it's like a lot of talk about you know powerful black women and proud black women, but not if you show up on Fox, mm. then you're sort of out. Right. You know, right. and a lot of talk about trans rights and LGBT or whatever. But if you show up on Fox, right, it's kind of out. You show out up the on window. Fox, but he's still married. One, right? Isn't that crazy? But they don't. They don't have a lot of love for the aforementioned. Caitlyn Jenner because yeah. sure. she wants she wants lower taxes and a stout border and doesn't like Gavin Newsom and it's like all right so it all goes out the window the second they think you're on the Fox side of the aisle. Mm. Yep, it's crazy. Yeah, all of a sudden if you don't if you don't check every box in the ideological discussion, you're an enemy or you're just and, it's and crazy. trans people yes. completely stop supporting Caitlyn Jenner. I don't think anything she said was that crazy. I don't, I don't get it. I don't. Yes, that's <laughs> the whole. The whole thing is with that side of the aisle, with those people, with the sort of woke, woke or super progressive. There is no nuance or wiggle room. But they are the same people who will call me a real woman, and then you're just a liar. And where's your support? I mean, you call me a real woman, but you're not really supporting me. 
That yeah, you make sense. couldn't. You know, I mean, I got kind of a front row seat with it with COVID. Like you could be on their page for everything, but then if you said, "I got a fourteen year old son, he's healthy. I don't think I want him vaxxed," I'd be okay. Mm-hmm. Now you're out. You're out. And it's like I, I was with you, I was with you on every other aspect, not me personally, but you sure. could be in lockstep with him on every subject. And all you have to do is veer just a little bit on one of their subjects, yeah. and you're gone. Yeah. Whereas conservatives have been a little bit different. Like, there's a lot of the religious conservatives I don't agree with on anything, but they've, I've never felt like they were shitty about it. Like, they don't care. They're like, all right, he likes this, he likes that, and that he doesn't. I've never felt like any type of shit from them. But then again, like, I don't care if uh, progressives like us or not. Like, our show is literally, it's, it's, it's more of just slice of life stuff. And I hope people like it and think it's funny and enjoy it. And we're also just it. casually trying something out. I mean, we're just having fun in life and that's just it too. It's not like we're trying to do this giant thing. Whatever happens, happens. Yeah, you, it's like we want to be, be judged on liking us or disliking us based on what we're doing on the videos. Like, and it's hard to do that. I don't want, I don't want people to like us just because Nikki is trans but, but or Jim to hate Norton us. should have more respect from the LGBT community as a whole for marrying one. No, nah, I don't. I don't yeah, even. Yeah, you, you deserve a little respect, Jim. You but, do but I don't that. care. It, it well, is I what care. it is. Um, it's one of those things where I don't need it. They can have it. They don't have but to. But Jim, have it. you've talked about it for thirty years. Twenty. First ten. Well, I was very quiet. I, <laughs> 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 yeah, it's it, you, it's just hard to build up goodwill. I've found with that side of the aisle and yeah. and even if you're one of their own and you're down with every cause you get accused of something you know i mean the second you know elon musk was the toast of their town for yep. 15 years electric cars mm-hmm. spacex he was going to solve our energy crisis and I mean, he was a poster child 10 minutes ago for those people. And then he buys Twitter and he goes, we're going to open it up. And they're like, we got to look into this guy and get some indictments. Yeah. And he's out of the club. So they, they'll they turn on you super fast. And there's no banking. There's no woke savings account. Right. You can't build up a ton of goodwill and then cash in. You know, Elon couldn't go... Hey, assholes, I gave you an electric car. Is that yeah. not enough? Because that's all you guys talk about is electric cars. And I gave you yeah. an electric car. It's like, now nope. yeah. you yeah. bought Twitter. You're a sinner, and the real fun is in throwing rocks at a sinner. So, <laughs> sorry, we have to punish you because the real yeah. joy is in punishment. Right. right. That's the joy. Retribution. <laughs> yeah. All right. We got some uh, news to get to, and we can get on to some more uh, current subjects. Sure. You guys want to hang around? We'll take a quick break. Sure, we'll come sure. Come back. We'll get into some news, and we'll do that right after this. You're about to hear a preview of The Jordan Harbinger Show with the world's best counterfeiter. How long does it take to print $250 million? Five months. It needs to be worthwhile. It's going to need to be perfect. 12,500 kilos or over eight Toyota Camrys or six Ford F-150s. That is multiple metric tons of cash. You must have been... stoked man because you knew you were going to put $20 bills all over all of that and then just never work again yes by design there are people specifically looking for you all the time this is all they do you can tell them whatever you want they're not dummies i mean this is as high as it goes it's the stuff of the line for more on how frank barasa printed his own fortune and got away with it check out episode 488 on the jordan harbinger show anywhere you get your podcasts well let me tell you about just thrive life can be overwhelming and it's not just your mind that suffers stress messes with your digestive and immune system too just calm the breakthrough new stress-busting formula from Just Thrive exclusive mood lifting blend of clinically proven, well, it's proven to help you relax and breathe easier in as little as four weeks. And uh, I also love the award-winning Just Thrive probiotic, which is in me as we speak. I take it every day because I believe that much in this brand. It's a spore based probiotic and it's a thousand times better in terms of survivability than most probiotics banishes bloat and constipation so your gut can produce more serotonin that's your happy hormone plus it supports better sleep all with a money-back guarantee i know the couple 
they're very much invested in this company because they believe in it, believe in it and uh, I believe in it too. Just Thrive, right, Dawson? Right now, when you go to JustThriveHealth.com and use promo code ADAM, you can get 20% off a 90-day bottle of Just Thrive Probiotic and Just Calm. That's like getting a month for free, and a portion of every purchase goes to Vitamin Angels, a nonprofit organization that saves the lives of millions of children and moms-to-be around the world by ensuring they get the vitamins and minerals they need to stay healthy and strong. To learn more about this groundbreaking company, don't miss Adam's interview with Tina Anderson, founder of Just Thrive. Take control today with Just Thrive. In honor of Jim Carolla's 92nd birthday, here's a list of all the things Adam Carolla will do before he dies. Pull down a surgical mask and say, there's nothing I can do. Or beat someone on the chest and shout, live, damn you. Just one of the things Adam will do before he dies. Let's get back to the Adam Carolla show. All right. Uh, Nikki Norton. Hi. Is in, in studio. Yes. Jim went to shake the dew off the lilies, we say here mm-hmm. in this country. Chris has the uh, news. Speaking of this country, <clears throat> the biggest day of this country is coming up this Sunday, Super Bowl Sunday. Mm. Wow. Yeah, huge. And um, so this is the last show we record before the Super Bowl, so I just want to get your prediction, Adam. So if people are, are putting in their bets, they can do the exact opposite. Um. I think KC is uh, a dog, I guess, a two-point dog. So says Mike August as of uh, this morning. And uh, I got Mahomes. And uh, I, I, why would you bet against Mahomes and KC and Andy Reid? So I would take KC and I would take the money line. I don't, I don't even know why you need the two points. Take the money line, get a little extra return because uh, – if they're going to win, they're going to win. The two points isn't going to factor in. And how can you how can you bet against Patrick Mahomes? That's right. that's my wow. thing. Yeah, we mm-hmm. have to remind everybody that every time Adam picks a Super Bowl winner, it's wrong. Yeah, you you <laughs> bet the opposite. You yeah. have to bet the always opposite. do the opposite. Yeah, yeah I'm a terrible gambler. I don't gamble because I'm compulsive and I don't trust myself. And I am also always wrong. I watch a lot of UFC. I am always wrong when I pick. Can't do it. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, that's right. I always I, I I have these weird cheering stratus, you know. I cheer for the guy in the UFC with the least tattoos. Really? Yeah. I don't know why. And then of course the white guys, you know, <laughs> push comes to shove. But if, uh, if you have to pick someone you yeah. don't know, you might as well go. Yeah, there. you don't know the guy. Yeah, but, yeah. You know, you don't know the other guy yeah, either. Yeah, and this yeah. guy looks like you. Yeah. But, <laughs> the guy who I want with my daughter. I'll pick him. Yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, but least tattoos are yeah. are my guy. Really? Or, uh, unless the guy with the most tattoos is like a heavy underdog. Then I'll then I'll go. For yes, that guy. I've interviewed so many of those guys. So a lot of times it's like, well, I've talked to him. I've never talked to him, so I have to mm-hmm. go with the guy I like because I've talked right. to him. Like you know, it's hard to mm-hmm. vote against them once you've talked to them. They're all nice guys. Mm-hmm. Right. So uh, so at the Super Bowl, I mean, the average ticket is just under nine thousand um, dollars. There's a suite, and it's two point five million dollars. Oh my god! Mm-hmm. It'll hold twenty people, mm-hmm. and some of the food you get: uh, surf and turf buffet, mm-hmm. wagyu hot dogs. Mm-hmm. Uh, lobster, carne asada, fries. Just a, yeah, you get you get all the the fixins, and um, they don't know exactly who has bought it yet. I mean, people think it's going to be Taylor Swift, but I. The, I the problem with the two point five is then when they go, hold on, free nachos. You know what I mean? Like we got Pepsi and Coke. You're like it's like all right, we're still at two point four nine nine nine. Like we got popcorn, baby. You got popcorn? Do you have the Parmesan par- popcorn? We we can look into getting. Is that it a bump? You. Is it more than two point five? It might be a little upcharge. Oh man, I gotta talk to my dad. Yeah, I bet you Taylor goes. By the way, into the I bet you she just goes into the owner booth wherever they they go. Mm-hmm. I bet you she won't buy a special one. I love mm-hmm. the fact she's driving NFL fans fucking nuts. Uh, <laughs> that right. makes me so. I like Taylor Swift, and I, I like the fact that people are just so annoyed that she's uh, popping up on those games. Oh. Well, yeah. think about it this way: as I was I was thinking about it this morning, the number one thing. The NFL guys like to complain about is the cutaways. They got to cut away. Yeah. You know, they could cut away every time Kelsey. All right, the over under prop bet on Kelsey scoring touchdowns is one and a half or something. So they can't cut to her. I mean, if he makes a twenty yard grab or something, they'll they'll cut away. But there's only 
the I don't know, check Dawson or Chris. Like the the prop bet on Kelsey receptions is seven, eight. Oh really? Well, what do you think it is? I thought he gets more than that. Well, so then you'd go above. I'd take the uh, the over. Eleven. Yeah. Eleven is kind of Super Bowl record. For tight ends stuff. We're, Wait, receptions? We're, Eleven receptions? We're getting. Well, I mean, he probably averages seven At per first game. glance, six point five. Oh. oh, I was way off. Okay, stop slowing my roll. The point is, and it's a six, projected seven point two for Sunday. Seven point two for Sunday. All right, how could I be more correct about this guess? Okay, <laughs> I didn't check, but seven. So okay. that's sure, the that's over under. If he has a bad day, he's got four. If he has a great day, he's got nine, 11, This 12. sounds like me but, talk about dick sizes. Yeah. <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. Because yeah. <laughs> yeah. Kelsey's a grower. He's not a shower. You know what I mean? <laughs> but potentially, we can only cut away to him 7.2 times. Right. You know what I mean? And those That's that, fine. That include a touchdown. That's, a, that's enough. It's a three-and-a-half-hour game. That's a... That's not that big a distraction. They cut away to her. The average cutaway time is it's about three seconds, right? right? They don't do it for 10 seconds. And that's that. And mm. But here's what I was thinking about philosophically. If a morbidly obese Bills fan shows up at the game with the Arctic freeze and takes his sweater off mm. and paints his nipples blue. <laughs> They'll cut away to that fat slob. Yeah. Now, who would you rather see if you're just sitting <laughs> home? Fair. You want to see her or you want to see the fat guy with the tit paint on? I'd probably rather see him because I relate to him. <laughs> <laughs> They cut all they do is cut away to pe- people with the face paint yep. or the mm. Bills thing, the horns on or whatever the the Raiders, yep. it's Darth Vader. You know, they they cut away to Let's something. We know. Why not cut away to a hot blonde? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And just show her for a couple of seconds and then that, that's it. I, I it doesn't bother me at all. I just don't care. Mm. And I love that it's annoying people. I just love yes, it's driving them crazy. Oh, and me the, too. you know the second that Casey won the conference championship, they they uh They've, they've been tracking Taylor Swift's routes, right? Oh, she has a show in Tokyo the night before. Will she make the game? Well, yeah. it looks like she will, but she yeah. has threatened to sue that uh, student yeah. who's been tracking her, her private jet. I guess he did he did it with yes. Elon Musk. Yeah. yeah. Just, it's just like a college kid who's just, this is public information. He's just posting where her private jet's going, and they sent him a cease and desist. Taylor he, Swift. He wanted money from Elon. He wanted 50 grand, I think, to stop or an internship. And mm-hmm. he, I, Elon offered him like five grand. I forget what it was, but it just kind of fell apart. Right. And it's I think they blocked him on X, so he's just doing it now on, on Meta. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Well, you see, you have to. Okay, so a couple things. She's smart because I heard today that she is going to use up. 3,900 gallons of Jet A fuel to get from Tokyo wow. to Vegas, Vegas right? Mm. So it's almost 4,000 gallons of fuel just to get her ass over there, which would upset most of the environmentalists. Sure. Except for she's smart, she doesn't say anything about it. So if you were huffing and puffing, if she was on the Al Gore train, and she was raising her up on the podium with Greta Thunberg, and she was talking about the polar bears, and she was doing the whole <laughs> spiel, then everyone would jump on her and call her a hypocrite. But she doesn't say anything, so no one can say anything back to her, even though she'd be wasting the same amount of fuel Al Gore would be wasting, or John Edwards would be wasting, but no one says anything, because she didn't say anything in the first place, Right. which is a lesson to the kids. Yes. Shut the fuck up. Enjoy what you have, and shut the fuck up. And The more fuel she wastes, the more I love her. That's I, right. I hope she blows a fucking hole in the ozone. Good for her. <laughs> I love Shake It Off. How does the flight... <laughs> back to me catching the flight from the Borgata. <laughs> My my favorite my greatest moment is is like I was also traveling with Mike August yes who had to drive from Atlantic City to Philly and fly Southwest <laughs> the following morning. It's oh. like, <laughs> he's Southwest like, terrible. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. He was like, is that uh, like spirit like terrible? Uh, it's not spirit bad. Oh. Yeah. It's, it's, it's different between murder and manslaughter. <laughs> yes. It's bad, but it's <laughs> not as bad. You still got drunk. She's still dead, but you know. <laughs> yeah, but there's yeah, but you were drunk when you were driving the vehicle. So yeah. there's some. You didn't stab her. You ran right. her over. You ran her over. Yeah, right. yeah, it's a little different. So um, 
when when I said to Jay with with Jim's parents in the room, uh, you know, oh Jay offered it. Jay said, "You want to catch a ride sure. back to Burbank?" And by, uh, by the way, back to yeah, back to Bur no, back to Van Nuys. And then he drove me to my house at four in the morning. That's, really? That's who Jay is. But I said, uh, I'm traveling with Mike August, like uh, any other room in the plane. And he's like, nah, we're all full up. And when I went back to my dressing room and Mike was sitting there with big eyes, you know, I said, <laughs> we go, like, sorry, Mike, yeah. just a one seat. No, yeah, yeah. And I wonder if Taylor has to do that with the Tokyo. You know what I mean? She's got a lot of backup dancers, musicians, publicists, you know. But that plane holds... 22 people like who someone's getting cut off you know it's not but but you don't want to spend four thousand gallons of jet a and just have her alone right on the flight like how's the cut it's got to be a, a cut pecking order circle. like she flies yeah. a falcon something that yeah 16 seats or something i mean if it can make it from there to there without refueling it's a big plane yeah, yeah. But there's still got to be a cutoff. But what do the environmentalists want to do? Because people are always going to fly private. It's not gonna, not, not like that's going to the, stop. They want to yell at people that talk about the environment and then fly private. Right. But yeah. she doesn't talk about the environment, so she right. gets to fly she can't private. Be a hypocrite. Yeah. Right. And, and I and I state for the record that I want to do damage to the ozone. So if I fly <laughs> private, I'm happy. I mean, I don't care. I'm going to die <laughs> when I'm 100. The world will be fine until I'm dead. So who cares? I'm, I'm, that's why you guys are a perfect I, couple. And I really mean that. So I don't care. No, she's uh, she's going, and I shouldn't know this, but she's going to Australia after that. So I imagine that the rest of the team will just fly right from Tokyo to Australia and have a few days to relax, and she has to go to uh, Vegas and then to Australia. Mm. It's uh -huh. a long flight. Wow, she's going to burn some, yeah. some she, fuel. She really is. I don't know why they don't fly. Like, a lot of them like to fly, like, on a commercial plane and just buy the whole first class because it's mm. bigger and more comfortable than private. I, I don't like flying private. I've done it twice, and it's tiny, and it's bumpy, and it fucking, it's uncomfortable. You feel every turn. Every turn. Bert flew me. I, I hitched a ride with Bert coming back from Austin, and it was great but it, it's just it's scary i don't like it he's just a terrible traveler he likes to make himself yeah. manic i am manic when i fly yeah no i mean you're you're right in that the safety record's a lot higher on the commercial flights yeah. and if you get some big thing where you have your own cocoon with a lay down chair or whatever like why not? Sure. I agree. Yeah, and it's uncomfortable on the private. Like, whoever's got the plane can lay back and put their feet up on the extra seat. I can't face back. Did you have to face backwards coming back with Jay? I get very motion sick. I faced sideways. Okay. And there was no booze on the plane. Oh, no. Because Jay... No, wait a minute. <laughs> there, no, worse. There were... A, the best... Look, if you're going to fly private, you got to drink on that flight. Of course. It's, it's bumpy. It's a little nerve-wracking. Yeah. And uh, Jay doesn't drink, and neither does his crew. You know, so all Jay wanted was chocolate chip cookies. Good for Jay. <laughs> <laughs> so, is he uh, an alcoholic? No, he's just oh. not. He's a very straight laced guy. He's he got no fucking drink. excuse. Yeah. I know. So <laughs> I was. Wow. So now there's seven dudes reading Car and Driver magazine while Jay's eating a chocolate chip cookie, and I have to pretend like I don't drink. You know, but I'm like, eh, what else they got in this thing? Maybe more. I've oh, got some little bottles of what is this? They're putting alcohol in these. Little bottles now. Yeah. Well, well, why not? I'll just see what Take it tastes. Yeah. <laughs> Never had rum before. Flying you know, no alcohol then, is okay, crazy. Forty-five minutes later, I'm like, I, what else they got? <laughs> oh yeah, the bottles are starting to pile, pile up. You know, <laughs> shoving them in my sock. You know, <laughs> waiting for when Jay pulls the magazine up over his face to like reach and <laughs> fumble around. It's at night. You're in Atlantic City. It's one in the morning. We're on a bumpy miniature jet. Yeah. You gotta have a yes. pop, man. Yeah. Was it bumpy going back? Oh my God. We first off, we had to stop in Muncie, Indiana, and refuel. It wasn't a big enough mm. jet really? to get across. So would it be faster if you flew commercial? Then maybe. Well, not faster than that. Jay's show finished at nine. My show finished at 10, and Jay just, like, literally, here's what the travel was. I, you know, I, I said, Jay, you know, I'm, I thanks for inviting me on the flight, but my fl my show ends an hour after yours. So, and he goes, ah, hang out, talk to Jim's parents, you know, eat some chocolate chip cookies. <laughs> you know? So he hung out. As soon as I got done with my show, I just walked right in his dressing room. He's like, ready to go? I was like, let's do it. Yeah. And we walked right out the back door, jumped in a limo. Drove 20 minutes to a private airport, got right out of the car, got on the plane. We were in the air 
35 minutes after my show. Right. I mean, wheels wow. wheels up. Okay. After, 35 minutes after I walked off the stage, we were in flight. Sure. So the next day would be, you know, security, waiting in line, drive to the Philly airport, drop yeah. off the rental car, like, you know. A whole thing. The whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. So wait, it was I, it was too small to make it. You you had to land in Muncie. Was yeah. it good weather or smooth landing, or did you have to go into shit weather that you should have avoided? Everything was fine. It just they didn't charter him a big enough jet to make it all, from all the way across the country. Was he okay with that? I would have been furious. Jay Jay got onto the flight, and when he was walking on the flight, he said to the person who flew him there. Because the same jet, I guess, flew oh, yeah. there. You know, he goes, uh, yeah, any more of those chocolate chip cookies? And they're like, nah, we don't have any. And so that's okay. He got on. I was, I, I was tearing the place apart for booze at that point. So I could barely hear him. So does he come in the same day or the night before? He comes in that day. He'll, so he'll fly back and forth the same day? Yes. Wow. He will. He will leave his car shop in, in Burbank go across the street to the private air go up the street yeah you know mm-hmm. 2,000 yards to the private airport get on the plane at you know 10 in the morning or whatever fly directly there meet with Jim's parents yeah. come off the stage <laughs> get denied chocolate chip cookies and land in in Burbank I think we land in Van Nuys because of like noise restrictions. You know, people at in, night. Yeah, people in Van Nuys are poor in Mexico yeah. and stuff like that. So what? Yeah, um, they uh, we land at four in the morning, a three three thirty four in the morning, and then he just drove me to my house. That's nice. Yeah, yeah that nice. I would do. I want to see Jay's collection, uh, his car collection. I've never done the in the uh, in that giant. And he has a car show. It's a collection. Of the, of... He has a show too where he drives cars. Does he still have that? Or he he does. Uh, Jay Leno's garage is not on cable anymore, but it's still on the internet. Oh, he's still doing it. Yeah, I love that he's just doing what he wants to do. But I want to see his. Doesn't collection. everyone love Jay Leno? He seems like a very likable man. He is. There, like there were a likeable. little teddy bear. A handful is. of bitter comedians from the like late nineties didn't like. Him, mm. but yeah. that's that's when you had to make a choice between Letterman and Leno. Yeah, and then the cool comedians chose Letterman. Yeah, and then they hated Leno. But I, much like the aforementioned poli- politics discussion we had, like, do you have to declare a major? Like, can't you like them both? Yeah. Who, oh, was, yeah. who was after him on the uh, Tonight Show? Jimmy Fallon. Oh, yeah, no, I, I I've done Letterman twice, and Leno always let me get away with more. Like it was uh, like when I did Letterman, they they go over your set very meticulously, and uh, they wanted to oh, well, don't do that homeless joke. He doesn't like that. And I remember mm-hmm. I was doing Leno one time, and I had a a, a dog. The joke was basically that the dog fucks a lady, <laughs> and it leaves paw prints in her hips. And I was like, I don't know if they're gonna let that go through. And the exact producer Debbie Vickers, oh fuck it, just do it. If they don't like it, they'll take it out. And they right. left it in, so they were much easier with material. <laughs> wow, yeah. Yeah, we, you know, you you learn about a host when you do their show, and you get a lot of people saying, Letterman doesn't like blank blank blank. Right. Ellen doesn't want you talking about meat or any kind of barbecue or anything. When you start, so when you do Leno, they don't, mm. they just go have fun. Yeah. When you do other people's shows, they go so and so doesn't like, and that means yeah. the person's uptight and oftentimes an asshole. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I never got that with Jay ever. No. They just said, don't mention that he wears the same outfit every day. Just kind of keep that to yourself. <laughs> That's, right. That's the only restriction. <laughs> All right, what else we got? Uh, well, we were talking about Elon Musk. Mm-hmm. Well, I he... share birthday with Elon Musk. I'll see there. Same money. Uh, and hope they come my way. Energy, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, but mine's bigger. <laughs> so he has teamed up with Gina Carano. Mm. Right? So, because mm-hmm. um, so Gina Carano is suing the Walt Disney Company and Lucasfilm over claims that she was wrongfully fired from. Right. The Mandalorian in 2021. Mm-hmm. So the suit was filed on Tuesday, and Corona alleges that she was fired from her role um, for voicing right wing opinions on social media. She is seeking a court order that would require Lucasfilm to reinstate her or compensate her at least seventy five thousand dollars. That's what she only seventy five thousand dollars. Yeah, she claims in the suit that she suffered emotional damage and lost millions of dollars in income, and X is helped covering the costs of the lawsuit. Yeah, it sounds symbolic, but good for her. She was on the show. She didn't do anything, but I think they she outed herself as a Republican, and that was kind of enough. So that's kind of wh- where we're at. So 
a lot of what we've dealt with over the last like few years is like you would say, listen, why should I have to wear a mask if I'm driving alone in my car? And they went, oh, you're a Republican. I see. I see. And you're going like, what? I just don't think a paper mask is effective. I'm on a hiking trail in Venice. Uh, uh, I see. Uh, mm-hmm. Uh-huh. They're licking their lips. Yeah. See. It's like me when I say I was born with balls. Then the trans yeah. people call me a conservative because they think yeah. I'm a real woman. Yes. <laughs> it's crazy. That's what I was about to it's say. It's yeah. crazy. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, you, I was always say, put your Oakley blade sunglasses on top of your trucker hat and people go, oh, one of them. <laughs> uh-huh. I see. Yeah. I see. So they ask her, what are your pronouns? And she goes, beep, boop, bop. And they go, Oh, <laughs> okay, I see. You have an and then opinion. they go, we got to get rid of you. And then she goes, what I do? I didn't say anything. It's like, no, you didn't say anything, but you did let us see something. Yeah, you didn't and say now, the right thing either. But that is that's so right. true. That's literally how it is. It's crazy. That's, that's how it is. It's crazy. So it's it's a tell, and they've decided, well, it's a kind of, sort of a two-part math, which is you go... Listen, I don't give a fuck about pronouns, and I'm not wearing a mask if I'm walking alone on the beach. And they go, oh, I see. You're a Republican. And then they go, oh, you're for Trump. Yeah. Oh, okay. You can't all have right, that. So now, now you got to go. And that's how they've worked. That's, this is all this has been over, like, the last two years. And so the people that are getting shit canned are like, I didn't say anything or do anything. And it's like... You did. You just didn't know what you did. Yeah, and the the whole thing. You're right. There is no nuance. Like they don't see any difference between like the whole obsession with pronouns. And if you go like, I just think the obsession is ludicrous. There's a difference between that and walking up to a trans person and going fuck you and misgendering them angrily. There's a great difference between those. When I first came to Canada from Norway and I try to get my first job or whatever, and they ask you on the thing like, what is your preferred pronoun? And I just remember because it was the first time that I ever saw it. So I just remember thinking. That's a little weird. I just thought it was weird because I'd never seen it before. But I guess that's what everyone is doing now when you're hiring people. I don't know. I found it weird. I found it a natural question, but I don't know. What it is, is it's kind of, again, back to the subject at hand, it's, it's a little bit of a test. You know, so the test is, what are your pronouns? The test is... Did you get your booster? The test is like, yeah. do you think masks work? Mm-hmm. Are you happy Elon bought Twitter? You know, little things mm-hmm. like that. Yeah. And what they do is they pro, you, they get a profile of you based on that. They're not interested in pronouns. Right. The, you know, there's no difference between colored person and person of color. The question is, is are you speaking the right language, right. you know? Are you saying, do you say illegals or do you say undocumented dreamers? Yeah. You know what I mean? So if you get it right, mm. and what they do is they set up a little bit, bit of an obstacle course to see how you perform. And if you get it all right with the pronouns and you get it all right with COVID and you get it all right with all the nomenclature, all the, well, I say Latinx and I don't say Mexican or anything. If you get mm-hmm. all that right then you're fine. If you screw up on a few of those, then they profile you, then they're going to kick you out of the you're crowd. You're out. It's right. weird how it's become like the point where you have to pick a side almost, and it's like a cult almost. You have to be all agreeing. Like, isn't it fine to disagree? Like, I think that's more fun. I well, agree. it's also about lawsuits, too. Like, they're so afraid of being sued that they'll say, what's your but pronoun? Who's just sue someone for a pronoun <clears throat> oh, they would. That's insane. But people would, That's though. crazy. But they An do. adult? That's insane. They do. It's, a lot of times, companies have been forced again a lot of them are just idiots but a lot of them have been forced to do this just to avoid fucking legal costs of somebody suing them for getting it wrong you right. can sue someone for that i mean people can sue for anything sure. oh they they discipline kids at schools for misgendering or not using the right pronouns or like whatever that's, yeah it's it's on over i never here. had any of that when i was growing up i think that's weird no Maybe. i didn't either I got called a lot of little names as a little lad, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> blowing my friends. They were not kind in Edison, New Jersey in the 70s. No. no. Mouth is still open. <laughs> well, thanks. All right, well, what Speaking else? of schools, so there's a Connecticut high school <laughs> who installed a tampon dispenser in the boys' restroom. All right. And it lasted about a half hour before being ripped out and destroyed. So they installed mm-hmm. it at 9.30 a.m., 9.52 a.m., it's yeah. gone. And um, so the the school said that they'll reinstall it at a later time because it's state law yeah. for them to put put in the tampon it's dispenser. Like the, the same thing when trans method. women carry tampons for what? 
Mm. Just to have it and to give somebody. Or just to feel different. Oh, just really? Do trans women carry tampons? I've heard a lot of them do. I, I was, wow, I didn't even know, but a lot of them do. Really? Yes. Huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that to be sympathetic to another woman I, who may not I, be packing? Frankly, I think it's just to accessorize and feel like a woman, mm. I guess. But I think it's silly. I mean. Yeah, mm. it's not, you're not going to use it. I don't mind tampons in the boys' room, though, because there's, there's so much ludicrous stuff. If you're going to a strip club and the shit they have in the men's room, the cologne, the no gum, sense, the condom, I'm like, I don't care what they it put in no there. It makes no sense. It's I silly. don't want tampons in the men's. No, no, thank you. doesn't bother me. Weird. I don't care. <laughs> I don't go near the vending Listen, machines. Listen, the, the, the cologne and the breath mints, are, you're trying to get laid, Jim. Exactly, but it's a delusion. I mean, it really is. <laughs> they should, they should, a handgun and a fucking mirror. I went, so, so I went to Equinox have. in New York where I had a gym membership, and I went quite a lot, but then I just kind of had a realization where I'm like, you know, because I go in, I go in the women's locker, $300 a month membership, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to use it. But I changed in the showers, of course. I'm not going to get naked there. But then I'm just like, Nikki, why am I even doing this? I don't want to go in the shower and change my clothes. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, I don't know if these women sign up for me being here, although it's legal for me to. So I just decided that I'm going to give up my membership because I don't know if these people sign up for that. Why would I want to be around people who I don't know are comfortable? It's just I realize that people have uncomfortabilities. And yeah, I'm not going to put myself in that pos position. You know, listen, I, I feel... It that way in general like when you i mean is, obviously it, i'm it, not going going to go into a men's locker of course not or a bathroom but i think it's in 10 years maybe they'll have a trans bathroom I well like sometimes jim will back me up you go to a comedy club there's one in austin i can't remember the name of it but you're in the green room and you see this big expensive contraption which is a lift and it's because the stage is three foot off the ground yeah. and they have this thing they had to install and it's taken up half the green room, you know? Yeah. And it's like, what is this here for? Well, in case a handy, capable comedian wants to do a, a, sure. a sit down, roll away comedian wants to do comedy. And you go, look, your first thought is like, well, all right. You know, and then you're like, what you think? But I don't, I don't, I've never met a comedian in a, in a wheelchair, but I'm sure they exist. Sure. But, I don't know how often they come through this club. I just kick my shin on the sharp edge of this thing and it's taken up half the no. thing. And then I think, well, the person in the wheelchair has got, it, is disabled and, mm -hmm. and had something bad happen or whatever, a yeah, bad lot. Right, right. right. And, but I'm also sure if that person got booked at this club, which couldn't be more than once every five years, they would... You know, help the person. You know, they would make accommodations, but the way the law works is you need this thing that nobody uses. Like, how many hotels have you been to where it had that big swing arm with the cradle in it that oh, lowered so. people like down into the pool? Yeah, and yeah. you're like, that thing must have cost twenty five grand. You it's know, an eyesore and you've too. taken up room, and more kids have smacked their head on it running around the pool than that. And I've never seen never a never person seen being lowered down in the pool. And then so you have to go well. At some point, it's a disability. Like, at some point, you go, this is what happened. I, I chose this life, or I was born with this deformity. But I'm going to have to kind of navigate. Like, the world doesn't need to drive a handicapped van because I don't have use of my legs. And then we have to sort of find a balance. Yes. And I think your head on it is much better than most Americans, which is, I get to do what I want. Fuck you. I'm mm -hmm. going to sue this club. You go... I get it. I'm in the minority here, right. and this may make some people uncomfortable or whatever. So I'll just cancel my membership and you know work out at home or, or whatever that is. Mm -hmm. Most people here go, right. nope, suing the club. Where's the elevator for mm -hmm. the wheelchair? Where's the thing that dunks? Uh, by the way, how much can you enjoy a pool? You, they're treating you like a tea bag. Yeah, yeah. You know? yeah. Like, <laughs> you're not playing Marco Polo. Right. You know, it's just pretty <laughs> lowered into this thing. I don't know. If it's just to clean your ass. I don't know what it's for. But how much pool enjoyment could you get being lowered into a shitty hotel pool? But the point is, is we need right that we need that dunker. They should have a separate area in the in the bathroom in the locker room for you to change. Like you know, if it's going to make life a little bit easier, as long as people treat 
us as a married couple and they don't want Nikki's rights to be any less. And I don't mean locker room stuff. I mean like we have the right to be married and we have the right to live our lives the same way every other couple well, does. Right like way, yes. I won't accept anything less than that. But these little nuances that people are working through we're getting used to it as a culture, and like there's pe- everyone is just trying to grapple with how but do we move again, forward. Then again, when Leah right. Thomas won that swimming thing, it's like, how dare you take that trophy? How can you even possibly think that that's okay? And who are these people around you telling you that this is fine? Well, that's where crazy Caitlyn insane. Jenner gets into trouble because mm-hmm. then yep. she takes the side of the girls who got beat in the swim meet, and now the trans community. Is but turning I mean, on Jesus Christ! It's so obvious, and no. we all know. Everyone knows and that it's, it's hurting a the cause. Like everyone uh, knows, yeah. and I think that everyone who says they doesn't, I legitimately think they're playing pretend. I l- really, really do that. I really Stupider mean that. Stupid liar. Yeah, that's yep. the game we try to play. <laughs> yeah. And by the way, this person, you know, Leah Thompson, Thomas, Thomas Leah, yeah, Thomas. Leah Thomas. I don't. We don't. Who who knows if she's a grifter? Like maybe she's gaming the system. Maybe she just wants that gold instead of being placed one thirty eighth on the men's squad. I, I believe know? her. I think she's trans, and I think you know, yes, it's like she, she wants to compete, but, but it's she still... went on that podium <laughs> accepting it. That's kind of like because if I put myself in a physical position where I'm on a physical podium. I I would have a very real issue and problem with that. Yeah, well, so bringing it back, which is you can be trans. Yes. And that can be your life. But you have to understand there may be some limitations that come along with that in 2022's America. Yes. And you may not be able to just seamlessly go over to the girls team, hang out in the locker room and win all the races. Yes. So it's like I'm sort of both. Like you can do this, but but understand you don't get to just move forward right. and sort of make up new rules the, the as you go. The dream would be to have a trans division. We're just not there yet, you know. So yes, that would, I would be. That's those are the ones I'd want to watch. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I'm a fan. All right, let's see what else we got. Do another one. Mm-hmm. All right, so there. Um, we didn't, we didn't talk about this, but uh, for a while. But Luis Rubiales, the. Uh, Ex Spanish soccer president. Oh, that rapist! It's, wait, who is he? Is he the guy who kissed? Yes. yes. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So he is facing oh. trial for kissing. <laughs> what? what? Are we for about? kissing Get Jenny out. Hermoso without her consent at the Women's no, World Cup. No, this is crazy. Can we see the kiss? This I don't. I, I, I don't. Oh, that's him right there. Yeah. He's the, far the right. right, guys. They're hugging. She's embracing him. Okay. Do, do, do we have the footage from the is, Golden Globes or whatever I we had? Who's taking him to trial though? Her. Well, is it her or is it the, is it the government? Okay, so just just to set the table, they won the World Cup or whatever it was. Mm-hmm. He, who has no record of any skullduggery, as we'd say over sure. here. Sure, yeah. Uh, he's not been handsy. He's not been me too. He doesn't have like a long history of uh, getting written up for for you know grabbing titties and asses. He's up there celebrating. Because he's kind of the architect of the Spanish team. And all the women are up there celebrating, too. And they're all kind of going down the line. And they're just hugging, rocking back and forth. We're celebrating. So, yeah. And she goes in and grabs him and gets the big hug. And he does the two-hand, you know. And then they go, and everyone goes nuts. Yeah. I honestly feel really sorry for him. I of think course. Sad, he didn't yeah. do he's, anything. He was he's, celebrating. He's in the reaction of celebration, and you're taking him to well, trial. State prosecutors. Oh, no. First, he got fired. Yeah. Right? For, yes. He got a three-year suspension Crazy. for celebrating. Right. Did the woman say, like, at first she was okay with it? And then, I, I vaguely remember. Yeah, so she was. She, no. People said she was like, she seemed like she was okay with it, and then she said she wasn't. I feel, That's exactly I feel right. legitimately bad for him. Yeah, so I he's do. accused. That's terrible. State prosecutors are accusing him of sexual assault and for allegedly coercing. <gasps> oh! It's just getting worse, uh, the, guys. The it's the just going to keep getting worse. To public su- publicly support him All in right. the public We, we need to show it again. It's a little hard because there's a camera arm sort of in the way. But you look I to the... Want to hear oh, I'm sorry. You look to the far right. All right. Go back, though. No, go back 20 just... seconds or something. She's embracing him. She's patting that's, uh, that's as long as the clip we had. That have. wasn't a sexual it's, peck, not right? Not at a whisper all. Or something in her that's ear. how my manager look kisses me. Yes, that... No. All right. Go to the goddamn 
Emmys, Grammys, whatever, whatever that. Uh, yeah. Golden Globes. Golden oh. Globes, whatever Golden that, that tip is. Okay. Or the Emmys, I forget. He gets a three-year suspension and gets thrown out of the league for three years Insane. for that. She didn't give a shit until they got to her. It's right. Crazy. Until, like, the Wokesters got to her and told her to change your story. Talk about being traumatized and it face raped on the podium. I, I, it also, like, who are these people? Like, and, but I will tell you. The Emmys, yeah. All right, here's the real deal. Here's the real deal. It's not their fault. It's 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 not the people's fault who are spearheading this because that is about less than 1% of the populace. Right. It's it's all the dumbos and all the cowards that shut their mouth. They just go, I yeah, I don't I don't yeah. I don't want to I don't want to yeah. but because they're oh, you're going to get shit because we're calling this guy a rapist who did nothing and I'm yelling he did nothing. He did nothing. And I was like, yeah, I don't want to I can't judge, you know, that's up to yeah. her. If she feels like she was traumatized or taken advantage of, then that's her. I can't tell her. As a woman, I will not it's like and fuck I'm off, sure, you I'm fucking sure the, coward. I'm sure the media never took his side. No. No, no, but everyone's fucking scared. That was a zero burger. It's not oh. a Me Too movement. The, the judge is also ruling that the uh, the coach and the sports director and the uh, head of marketing should be tried as well for allegedly pressuring the woman to defend Luis. A step she I agree. Jail for all of them. That's right. Jail no. for all of them. Show it. So, uh, so this uh, is this is Kieran Culkin winning the okay. Emmy for success. I said this. Nobody said jack shit about this. All right, here we go. Kieran Culkin, Succession. All right, standing ovation. There's Brian Cox, his co-star. He's walking out towards him to congratulate him. We'll probably didn't need this much head on this uh, tape. But, <laughs> all right, they um, kiss. They kiss. Right. Right. So they yeah. kiss. They kiss. All right. But then there's the next one. And I'm sorry. The, and the, then the bear one. Right. He did the two hand kiss. He did yeah, the, sure. the kiss. Nobody gave a shit. Nobody right. said anything. It's crazy. Yeah. And then. And then this is this when is the, the bear uh, one. The cast of the bear. This happened ten minutes ago. No one said anything. Hmm. All right. That was on the oh, screen. Oh. We don't have it anymore. Oh, he was in. It. He wasn't in the room. All right. Hey Dawson, are the guests here? Is. Uh, yeah. You should put the sign up. That says the guests I think are they, here. Byron was greeting the guests, videos. and that's uh, yeah. all right. Byron, put the sign up. The guests are here. Thank What's you. Good? Sorry. Uh, <laughs> you don't need to do it now. Yeah, I just want to thank <laughs> restaurants as a whole, hospitality as a whole. Oh wow! <laughs> oh. oh wow! <laughs> all right, Good someone's kiss. someone's got to go to the, the gas chamber, right? <laughs> I mean, how long did that last? 200 times yeah. longer than the Spanish that guy? That was a woman. <laughs> All right. He would be. And if I could just get that trophy, I would take more than a kiss. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Does anyone give a shit? Did anyone say anything? No. I mean, explain that to the tent in my pants. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're officially insane. Spain is yeah. fucking yeah. nuts. That's crazy. They're nuts. And once again, whatever's going on now, it's not... You know, go back to Germany, 1939. It's, it's, it's not the Gestapo. It's not the Jews. It's the people who remained silent when all this was happening around them. It's yeah. the fucking pussies who didn't say a fucking word. COVID, kissing, Nazi Germany. Come on, people. Step up. Start talking. It's it's never Come on, media. It's step never it up. Happen. I agree it's with never you 110%. Happen. The, never the happen. Spanish media should all be 100% this is insane. And he should have a lawsuit against them for suspending him for three years. For nothing. It was nothing. We had Orny Adams in here who wouldn't say a fucking word. I just kept he, yelling I, it was he nothing. Basically and he basically lost going, his rah, 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 rah. life in a moment he lost, of celebration. It's a fine. Lost he loses his life. His life and every, you remain silent. In five years, he'll have a case. Jesus but if that was Christ. not on the lips and on the cheek, I bet you she wouldn't do that. Yeah, so well, all of this. He, listen to this about um, Spain. So based on a sexual consent law passed in 2022, uh, he could face a fine or a prison sentence of one to four years if found guilty. <laughs> For what? Um, because what? there's a new law that eliminated the difference between sexual harassment and sexual assault. Oh, sanctioning God. Any oh they made it the same thing? Sexual act. All right. 
All right, I'm upset. Uh, Jim, Nikki, we got to make room for Perry Farrell and Stephen <laughs> Perkins from Porno for Pyros and Jane's Addiction. Yeah, sure. So, um, but Thank thanks. You. Can I say Nikki and Jim NYC is the YouTube page if people want to see what we do? And if you want to watch our lives a little bit, that's where we are. At Nikki and Jim NYC. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Adam. This was fun. Yeah, fun. Anytime. Thank you, buddy. Come Pleasure. on back. Yeah. Thank All you. All right, quick break. Back with Perry and Stephen right after this. Morgan and Morgan, it's 2024. Let's talk about something important. If you get hurt this year, your injury could be worth millions. If you're ever injured, you can check out Morgan and Morgan, America's largest injury law firm, over 100 offices nationwide and more than a thousand lawyers, more than $20 billion recovered for 500,000 plus clients. So uh, yeah, they've been there and they've done that. Morgan and Morgan has a proven track record of fighting to get you your full and fair compensation. They've been fighting for people for 35 years. So they have the experience. Racing my vintage cars is hard. Submitting an injury claim with Morgan and Morgan, why that's easy. Morgan and Morgan, right Dawson? If you're ever injured, you can check out Morgan & Morgan. Their fee is free unless they win. For more information, go to ForThePeople.com slash Adam or dial pound law, pound 529 from your cell phone. That's F-O-R, ThePeople.com slash Adam or pound law, pound 529 from your cell. This is a paid advertisement. Well, good news. It's O Rewards Bonus Points Month at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Shop in the store, do it online to receive points and get rewards sent straight to your phone or inbox. Get two, three, four, even five times bonus points on select purchases. Receive bonus points on select items throughout the store like wiper blades, antifreeze, coolant, parts cleaner, motor oil, and more. Those bonus points can help get you to your next rewards even faster. You'll receive a $5 reward for every 150 O reward points to use on your next in-store or online purchase. Members can check points and rewards online anytime. If you're already an O rewards member and not receiving your rewards, just add an email address or mobile phone number. Get a $10 reward for updating your existing account. If you're not an O Rewards member yet, signing up is easy, quick, and simple. Just do it online at O'ReillyAuto.com or in store at O'Reilly Auto Parts. That's Perry Farrell in studio. Of course, Jane's Addiction and Porno for Pyros. Porno for Pyros is going out on a farewell tour. Their first tour in 26 years. Yep. It's been a while. <laughs> uh, I got some dates for you guys. Observatory, Orange County, that'll be February 13th and February 15th. Observatory, San Diego, so you don't have too far to go up the road. And then Ventura Theater, that'll be February 17th. You can go to livenation.com for all the dates and info. Perry, um, I'm trying to think of what your place in, in music history is, like, I think people think of you as like an innovator, sort of like an artist, pioneer. Uh, pioneer. Do you ever give it any thought? Uh, not not too long. I don't think about <laughs> that too too much or too long. I, I tend to just keep looking in front of me. Did um, dreaming you? And I I was I was always in L.A. and I always listened to K Rock. So I was the second. Jane's Addiction hit or Pono for Pyrus hit, I was just there because yeah. I feel like K Rock was probably amongst the first stations to play your stuff. Yeah, back in the day. And then once K Rock played it, it would just go everywhere after that, right? Back in the day. Yeah, yeah, that's, I know. Everything has to be couched with back in the day. <laughs> yeah, these days, it's a whole new world. Uh, especially with the you know with the, with the music scene has changed enormously, and um, some some of it sucks, and some of it's really freeing, and um, there's a lot of room to experiment and pioneer, as you yeah. point out. What sucks? What sucks? 
I think what sucks the most is the the products that the record companies, uh, you know, they're trying to figure out a way how to make the most m money they can. So they start with a big ass, and then they, you know, get somebody to write for the person with the big ass. <laughs> But you know, when you're when you're sad and blue and you're alone in your room, you know. Uh, and you don't have a big ass to cry with you. You know, it used to be you could listen to a great song. And it'll make you feel better. Right. Yeah, you don't have enough ass cheek for today's music industry. But well, I, I well, did... Well, you, know what's, you hmm. know what's funny is you can buy big ass cheek, right? Yeah. But I don't like the look of the... I don't like the look of it. I, I hope one Some day... Something don't feel right about it. Right. I hope one day anthropologists study this because <laughs> yeah. when I see the big inflated ass, it does not feel attractive to me. Me Now, neither. Now, we're not in, in their ass demo. They may have an ass demo. They're not doing it for uh, you. Yeah, they may not be trying to attract yeah. us. But just like anything, you know, if you ever try poi or Vegemite, you go, I don't like this. But well, somebody does. And right. you, go, you go, but who? There's a market. <laughs> but there's a well, market. They think they they think they do. Or, you know, what I hear though is it's it's very tough to, to remove and the ass implants. Yeah. I I don't know why I wasn't gonna bring it up, but I heard today I think there's a rapper called Ice, Ice Spice, Spice and she's got a song. That uh, mentions some ass and some farting. Yeah. Oh. And it, and it's probably number one. So it's called "Think You the Shit" and in the parentheses "fart." <laughs> so if you're sad and blue and you're in your room right. and you've got gas, I want to put this song. <laughs> then on. there is a song for yeah. you. So you're pretty on the nose with this observation because the number one rap song now is about farting. <laughs> and I'm right on the nose, huh? <laughs> That's her? Oh, I've seen her on TV. She's yeah, on she's commercials. Very big artist right now. She's tripping. Think you the shit, bitch? You're not even the fart. Oh, wow. I'm breaking their hearts. Like... It rhymes with heart. <laughs> If I rapped, I, I think Silent But Deadly would be my name. That should be a hot rap name. Silent But Deadly. I want to go back a quick second to what Perry said about, uh, you know, get a chick with a big ass and then get somebody to write songs about it. I mean, <laughs> Tom Petty, Tom Petty made basically a whole album uh, called The Last DJ, um, where he explored all of this stuff. And in one of the songs, uh, it's, it's written from the perspective of the music executive who, you know, one of the lines is, give me a kid with a good looking face. Give me a kid that can remember his place. Yeah, you know, and and the yeah. same thing for girls. That that is largely what the music business has become. Has yes, is resorted to to try to make a buck. <laughs> yeah, so we're all. Uh, I mean, you can't really fight the system. You just have to yeah, kind of. I can. Well, <laughs> you have to find a place outside of it, I guess. Or I can just you do, fight it? I, I just do my own thing. And what is, for you, if, if you're not playing live, is there, like, so when you talk to comedians, I talk to comedians, you know, they go, some guys just get up and write. Other guys go on stage and kind of write on stage. Like, while they're doing their set, they're coming up with stuff and they're mentioning stuff, and then they write it down later. And, you know, some people say you write novels, you have to sit down, treat like a job, you got to write eight hours a day. Some people say you got to be inspired. Like, what is your schedule, your creative schedule like? Well, you know, luckily I travel a lot. I'm always around uh, groups of people I consider to be, you know, uh, setting the trends, uh, culturalists, you might call them. Uh, they always love. They always love the right music, the good music. That's it's it's background to the party, right? So when I'm in those situations and I'm listening to other people and they're talking about stuff, man, some of the greatest lines I've ever had come from just some cat I don't know just says something and I go, "That's got to be a song," you know. 
I, I basically, some people like to write alone, some people like to get drunk, write alone, some people like to get drunk and write in a crowd. I let it come to me. Usually when I wake up, I try to quickly get get what I was dreaming or what, I, because I believe that in, in your sleep, conversations are going on with your spirit, in the spirit world, and then you come out of it and you try to remember as much as you can of it, and they're giving you direction for the day, mm -hmm. what to do. And to me, I'm always looking for solutions to settling the world. Seriously, set, you know, the world should be at peace. This world is a beautiful world. How to make it better, how to make us brothers and sisters get together and, and love each other and have a good time. It, and it, you know, it's, it's on my mind constantly, and especially when I wake up. I first uh, am thankful that I woke that I was able to even live another day because I love life that much. So you grow up back east, right? Yeah. You have a dad who's a jewel? No. You're, well, My dad was a jewelry oh, he designer. Was a jewelry designer. So you got the artist part yeah. going over there. Yeah. And your mom was, a, uh, she was a fine an artist. artist. Yeah. So there's art yeah. in your family. So yeah. when, when does music come in for you? Immediately, so I'm. Uh, I was born in 1959. I'm 65. Coming up, come on up on 65, but I had uh, an older brother and older sister. My brother's a good 10 years older than me. Sister's eight years older than me. So the Beatles and the Stones, AM radio was was happening when I was first born. So you know, in New York. It was Cousin Brucey, WABC. Um, they would play, you know, the Rolling Stones, the Beatles, the Young Rascals, you know, that era of music. And it was, it was music all day and all night in my house, blasting. My older brother was... Um, you know, he lived in Greenwich Village. He was a, a greaser, mm. then became an outlaw biker. Wow. My sister loved soul music. So I got to, you know, learn about uh, Sly Stone and, uh, you know, all the great soul singers. I had a well rounded kind of education on music from a very early age. You know what it's like when when you're young, hanging out with older guys. You just get you you kind of get hip quick. So, uh, by the way, Rascals. I mean, first Young Rascals, then just became the Rascals. Right. Underrated. Underrated. Underrated in that they're sort of like the Hollies, and that they have so many songs that are so different that they don't get credit. People don't know they sung this song and that song. Certain bands can can have so much range that they don't get credit because they think they're like a one-hit wonder. But the, the Rascals band, Holly, the same way, there's a few of them yeah. out there. So <clears throat> when do you come to L.A. to, to like live the, attempt the dream? There wasn't a dream there. That, I was a runaway. Oh, you uh, run away. I, I came here to surf and skate. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. At what age? As soon as I graduated high school, the day after I graduated, I jumped on a Greyhound. And came here to surf and skate? Yeah. And was the plan, or was there a plan, that other the than plan. surfing? <laughs> the plan was to get the, get the, can I curse? Yeah. Get the fuck out of here. And so what year did you get to L.A.? Uh, I finally got into L.A. around 80, 81, mm -hmm. something like that, so... The 70s, uh, I was living in Florida. I, I was born in Flushing, Queens. Mm -hmm. Moved to Woodmere. for uh, My father worked in the city. Uh, as I say, he was a jewelry designer, West 47th Street. So as a little kid, I was walking the streets of New York City. 
and my dad would send me off on errands, you know, like, go give this to so-and-so to, to polish it up, get, you know, set a stone. And they didn't know it. My dad's, you know, plan was give it to the kid and no one will suspect that he's got gems in his pockets. <laughs> so I felt really cool going able to... Hey, hold on. Your, your headphones are... Screwing. Came unplugged? No, they're just... They're loose. There's something... Well, you can take them off. You don't. You don't need them. If you really? Don't want them. Yeah. All right. I think I will. All right. All right. So, I got to walk New York City, learn learn about the cats in New York. Like I'd be staring at pimps, and my dad would be going, "Come on, pal, keep 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 going." We'd this be on in the seventies. That that was in the sixties. My I started working for my dad, and my with my brother. At age five, I was designing jewelry, yeah, and, they, and they'd use me as the cute little kid to sell to the to the ladies. You know, <laughs> they go go over and talk to her, see if you can sell her a ring. And I, I'd say, would you like to see this ring? And I'd show it to them. You know, and you know, six times out of ten, I can get them to buy something. Yeah, now obviously New York was so different back then. Yeah, it was a complete different. God, there's a. Oh, no, I got to think ways, of this song. In many ways, the greasiness, yes. I, miss, I miss it. I miss the smell of cigars in the wintertime, you know, going in the buildings and it's, it's stinky, smelly, stale cigars and <laughs> well, trench coat dudes. Yeah. And, you know, and they're good fellas. And you know what it's we, a, lot, a lot like? Yeah. All the great old photographs you see from the old time boxing matches everybody smoked cigars and cigarettes, right? So yeah. everyone at ringside smoked. And every black and white picture had this haze yeah. of smoke. And so they're the most iconic pictures in the world because it had this beautiful tableau. And then they got rid of all the cigarettes and they got rid of all the cigars, but they also got rid of the best pictures too. So, yeah. so New York had that film on it and it was the same kind of analogy which is yeah. i don't know you'd walk out of the arena smelling like cigar smoke but those iconic pictures are yeah. iconic for a reason yeah. because they're black and white because they're taken from film cameras and because there was 80 guys smoking cigars yeah well ufc has kind of got some celebrities hanging around that you know yeah you but they're not they're not smoking yeah. no they're not smoking they're not they're not mafia <laughs> there's a or are they there was a yeah. uh there was a song david johansson is it david johansson who also had the do you know funky david? funky but chic um that one after the dolls yeah david johansson had a song about what they did to New York and Times Square, and he was also Buster Poindexter. Yeah, was, right. Yeah, right. So Buster Poindexter had a song ab about basically them taking the old Times Square with all the pimps and the brothels or the peep shows and speakies and all that stuff. Used to be dangerous. And they turned it into like Disney World, yeah. you know? And he had a song about it circa like 1996, 97. Anyway, you can look at that. So then you go to Florida. Yeah, so my family moved down to Florida like 1970. First, I got to be in New York while the the Knicks won the you know championship, uh, championship yeah. with Walt Frazier. Right. Tom Seaver was pitching for the Mets. I got to see, I got to witness that. Right. Be there for that, and Joe Namath and the Jets. Wow. 16, All yeah. that was the last great, as far as I'm concerned, the last great years of the New York. Certainly, New York Knicks. Right, yeah. Up and until up until you never know. We got a shot. So people are are looking at the Knicks now. Like there's some possibility here. So you go then to Florida, and then you come from Florida to LA to skate and surf. Right. And you're you have to find a place to flop, to hang out, some kind of money to live, to live. Yeah. And how do you figure that out? So, well, I first, uh, to be honest with you, my dad um, 
we had we had drugs that uh, we would my dad would sell sometimes. Uh, in those days, you know, he was getting older, and uh, he moved from New York, which he had a, a legitimate business, uh, down to Florida, and he was hanging out with uh, wise guys mm-hmm. more and more. Mm-hmm. And he got into, you know, what wise guys get into, you know, numbers, uh, uh, stolen items, drugs. Mm-hmm. So I knew where he kept the stolen items and the drugs. So I, I snagged some drugs and sold them, and that's how I got my ticket out mm-hmm. there. I had a friend, Jimmy Mullally. He got a scholarship to a junior college, middle linebacker. Uh, he was part of my surf crew. Mm-hmm. And he told me, you know, here's where I'm going to be. He knew that, you know, I had a hard time at, at where I was living at my house. So I took him up on his offer. Um, I was able to live with him. And my first jobs I, uh, I were construction. I went to construction sites, and I would just ask, you know, the older dudes, you need someone to carry lumber? Mm-hmm. And sure enough, you know, these old guys, they don't want to be carrying that lumber back in those days. You know, stack of eight on your shoulder. <laughs> And I proved to him, you know, you can sit down and drink your coffee and I'll take care of the rest. So I made money uh, uh, as a framer. Hmm. That was like the first thing I did. But I had the talent of jewelry designing. Mm -hmm. And I was also a good artist. I can draw well. So I got job freelance doing uh, jewelry. And um, and then I got job uh, as a... um, this is a little embarrassing to admit, but like there was some creepy people that had these, uh, he called himself a, a sex education guy. It was really a, a creepy dude that would have these sick orgies and he, was, he had a newspaper. Mm-hmm. So I would draw for him. So I, w- I was drawing for like a sex trade. What were newspaper. you drawing? I was trying to keep it classy, but, <laughs> you know, you can imagine. Would he, guy, would he tell you what to draw? No, he left it up to me. So I would try to make it like they're doing, you know, dirty things, but they're in love. <laughs> <laughs> there used to be, so, you know, my first job was just walking on a construction site. You and did? Asking old dudes. Yeah, I was, a, car- I was a carpenter for over a decade. Nice. So framing finish whatever i did all the building yeah. i did all that shit but. i did it in hemet you know where hemet is yeah so hemet's like the the high desert it's out by coachella that's where jimmy's um he got the senya seno junior college he was a middle linebacker mm-hmm. so i i got to live on his couch with a bunch of football players that would you know take my food eat my food <laughs> Yeah, look, if you're ever desperate and you need a job, you walk onto a construction site yeah. and you start moving stuff or digging ditches yeah. or your labor, yeah. your construction labor. And that's how I started. I just didn't have any artistry to fall back on, so I just stayed for a decade. Yeah. But I got I got myself, you know, a, my belt and uh, a, you know, a crew. I was on part of a crew, but I it, it wasn't for me, you know. I, I went there to surf. I looked, I looked on a map. Hemet looked a half an inch away from the ocean. Right. But when I got there, it was a six-hour drive. <laughs> so I, I lasted in Hemet for like a year. Mm-hmm. And then I just had to get closer to the beach. And so now you've been in... The Los Angeles area, or at least no, California. No, I, I, I wasn't in L.A. I I wanted to surf, so I moved to I moved to this area. I fell in love with it when I first got my first chance to surf. It was trestles. Mm. So this is it's like Orange County, yeah. And then south of there is this place, Lucadia, and Encinitas, and Carlsbad, yeah, and. Uh, Cardiff by the Sea. 
and and a kid that you know was coming from the East Coast, I'd never tasted an avocado sandwich <laughs> or a, a health shake, right. smoothie, and I fell in love with the lifestyle and and the girls. They all had bleached out blonde hair, <laughs> sexy, cute surf bunnies. Man, I I felt like this is a place for me. I'm gonna live here for the rest of my life. <laughs> my first construction crew was a bunch of dudes from Topanga who surfed. Topanga. So there is a, such a thing as like a construction surf connection. It's weird because I find you have to get to the site early. Well, if a swell came in, they didn't show up. Okay. <laughs> I mean, if there was a swell, they just they weren't there, and there wasn't. The, the way construction worked, you, first off, there was no phone. You didn't have to call in sick or anything. Just You just don't show up. And then you'd show up the next day, and you just didn't get paid for the last day. So no, no one really cared that much because they didn't pay you if you didn't show up. Eventually, they'd get tired of your shit. Right. But if you're a decent carpenter, you could miss a few days. There wouldn't be a lot of questions asked. You well, just, you can throw your back out, but when you're that young... I threw my back out awful bad, just showing off how many like uh, joists I could carry. Mm, he and Joyce. And and I, but I was only gone out for three days before I went right back to work. These days, I would have been out for like six months. It's, yeah. Well, listen, I would have never guessed in a million years you were on a construction crew. I just never thought of you that way because I think of you as like an artist. And not a guy swinging a framing hammer, but uh, I'm tickled pink that we have that. <laughs> we have something fresh in out of high there. school. We have yeah. common ground here. Um, I unfortunately did it for ten more years, though. I probably should have designed jewelry. But now you get down to the ocean, yeah, and now you're doing artistic endeavors more so, yeah. And then when does the music kick in? So. Uh, I, I tried my best. I also happened to be a wrestler. Wow. So I was, I was a, a state champion wrestler when I lived in New York. Wow. At what weight division? Like 113, something like that. All right, so you were light. So I was a light kid, but I, I'll fuck you up. <laughs> <laughs> and you probably had to sweat. And, you didn't walk around at 113. Um. Yeah, I did. It was like natural. Right, you didn't like have some to sweat guys off had the way. A, some guys had to wear like the wetsuit right. in the 110 degree room. Right. And that was awful. Like I felt bad for those dudes. You know, um, I just naturally am I'm a wiry guy. Mm -hmm. So I did very well. And I, I, I wanted to go to art college. So there was this place, Miracosta. College. It's a it's a junior college, but it majors in. There's like a lot of art programs. Mm -hmm. So my dream was I was gonna go to college, get a degree at Miracosta, surf in the mornings, but then of course you got to make money. So I had a job at night. I would work. I got a job at a vitamin factory. <laughs> so I hate to admit this story because. Somebody ate, ate the vitamins that I, met, that I made, you know. <laughs> but when the boss would leave, me and uh, the boss's son, we had the graveyard shift. And we get, would have vitamin fights. <laughs> and they were really fucking tough. Like, it would go on for like an <laughs> hour, mm -hmm. hiding behind the barrels right. of, the, of, the bar of the powder that you're going to make. Uh, vitamins with and, and we would nail each other with vitamins and then run over to the next <laughs> vitamin vat and hide behind that and there was a lot of vitamins that we would sweep up and put in Back. put in the jars you know yeah, what I mean? so it a helps lot your of people, immune system I felt terrible later I thought back about it like I hope I didn't give somebody rabies or <laughs> whatever but um, one night the guy, the guy came back in, the boss came in. I don't know why he came in. Maybe he thought something's wrong. You know, the pro pro production is down or something. Yeah, he showed up rabies. about like one in the morning 
And there we were just whipping vitamins back and <laughs> forth at each other. I got fired right then and there. And, but I, I was doomed anyway because the chemicals of making vitamins, I started losing my eyebrow hair, my, my eyelash hair. Really? So I looked like one of those. Jada uh, Pinkett. Well, one of those cats that have no hair. Yeah. Oh, sure. I didn't know Jada Pinkett had no eyebrow hair. Uh, she's good. She's missing some. Jeff Ross. Don't, yeah, alopecia. Jeff Ross has alopecia. How do you go from that to that? <laughs> is, is, is it alopecia? Yeah. Okay. Well, anyway, I look, <laughs> I look like shit. And I felt like shit. Mm -hmm. And because then, as the sun came up, I would try to paddle out and catch catch the waves if there was surf, which usually there was something to surf. Mm -hmm. I had a nervous breakdown. And um, as I told you, I was a runaway, but uh, trying to go to college and put myself through and surf, and then they wanted me to, to uh, they, they saw I could bench like 350. Really? So they, they got me on the wrestling team. 350 at your weight? Yeah. That's insane. It was it's all that lumber. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So they saw that I can, I was a tough kid. So they, they got me on the wrestling team and I was third. I placed third in the uh, state of California uh, in my weight class. But I, I, it, I couldn't do it all. I couldn't do it all. And have no ha hair, you know, like yeah. I was falling apart. So I told my, I finally told my father where I was. It would have been two, two and a half years. They didn't know if I was alive. Mm -hmm. I, um, I just said, can I come home for a while? Because I just, uh, I'm losing it. Mm -hmm. so they, let, they let me come home and I started over. Um, Back to Florida. Back to Florida briefly. I wasn't going to stay. How old are you at this point? No, I've got to be 19, mm -hmm. something like that. So when does music start? Oh, yeah, you asked me about music. Yeah. So I always love music. But no, I'm music. interested in wrestling and framing mm -hmm. and everything. I, yeah. I love that. But, but music, yeah. So I always had in the back of my mind the notion that if I wanted to, I could I could get up there like Mick Jagger or Bowie. I had the look, mm -hmm. but of course, I'd never done it before. Mm -hmm. um, so when I came back out to California, my dad, he had his, um, in those days, one of, the, one of the stolen things he kept was the sideband radio. Mm -hmm. So that's what the truckers used to have to to stay in touch and, you know, bide their time while they're driving. Oh, Citizens Band. Yeah, yeah Citizens Band Radio. Yeah, a CB. CB, right. right. So he would be calling out to, to his friends in California, my son is out there. If you see him, his, you know, his name's Perry. Call, you know, that's his name. I, you know, tell him to get a hold of me, I miss him, I love him. He had a triple high heart bypass surgery. When I left, he, he had a massive heart attack. Wow. I didn't know. Right. So I came back home, and he got me a job working, uh, selling jewelry, but it wasn't real jewelry. I, it was like fake jewelry, because you don't want to walk around with a case full of real jewelry. Right. So. He had one of his friends give me a job to try to sell the, their line of jewelry. Mm -hmm. That you know, it's their own designs. I lived out of that car. I would go up the coast. I put on a suit that I got out of the trunk. Mm -hmm. It was a Buick Regal. It's mm -hmm. a big car, so right. I could sleep in it. Right. And it had enough room for me to keep my wardrobe and scissors. So I can cut my hair and look presentable. <laughs> and you're in Florida still now, right? No, and oh, I'm you're back out here. here. Okay. I, I got a I got a place first in Oceanside. Mm -hmm. Oceanside had great waves, and it was very. It's a very underrated place. It had a lot of 
Marines living there. Mm -hmm. it, it it went from Camp Pendleton to Oceanside. Right. And it, so I I could afford to get an apartment right near the beach. Now, I had jars full of cockroaches that I would catch to show the landlord, man, you got to you got to fumigate this place. <laughs> he he never did, and there wasn't shit I could do about it. So I thought if I if I collect them and show him how bad it is, maybe he'll have a a heart. He could care less. So, but I was happy as a clam because I was living right across the street from the beach. I was, and that time I was designing jewelry. And I started designing jewelry and I got a job from my dad. One of his friends, his, his CB friends, gave me a job as a liquor, di liquor distributor, delivery guy. So basically I would go and sell, uh, sell cases of liquor mm -hmm. to liquor stores or nightclubs. And I had a van. You know, I, they, they gave me a van. It wasn't mine to keep, but, and every day I would hit, hit the, uh, the streets delivering liquor. And there was a club in, in Orange County. I forget the name of the club right now, but they, uh, they were doing modeling shows. And, uh, you know, there was a lot of hanky panky going on. And rich dudes with yachts mm -hmm. would. Uh, it was like that scene, and I'm waiting. The, this this chick, she's running the show. It's a, it's a modeling show, a modeling show at this place. Yeah. So she asked me, "Are you a model, by any chance?" And I said, oh, "How did you know?" Yes, I am a model. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, uh, and I'm thinking through my head, she's, she's going to give me a job, but I don't want to be a model. But so I said to her, but I can do many things. I can do impersonations of, of singers. Like I can do Frank Sinatra. I can do David Bowie. I can do Mick Jagger. You know, I never did it before, but I knew if, if I, if, if she gave me the shot, I could do it. So I started doing impersonations of, you know, Frank Sinatra, Bowie, and, and Mick Jagger. And this modeling gig turned into, and how would you like to go to this party on this guy's yacht? So it was a bit of a, no, it wasn't a bit. It was an escort service as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. So... My wife knows all this, so all right. I, don't have, I don't mind t telling you these stories. But So f I, briefly, I briefly escorted some older ladies, and I had a girlfriend. Wait, who was, did you work as an escort? I was invited to the parties, and uh, there I was. You, you were know? A, sort of a gigolo? Yeah. As Frank Sinatra. As Frank. Yeah, yeah like the, <laughs> they saw me as... Wow, you look like David Bowie, you know? Right. And I would have like my following. <laughs> following. <laughs> and I had a girlfriend too that followed me up from Cardiff. We you know, um Did she have to pay you for sex as well or did you give it to her for she free? En she ended up leaving me for for the guy w that was <sighs> whose yacht we were on. Oh, oh. that makes sense. That's how it, it makes works. sense. Well, he, <laughs> you got a dinghy. You got a surfboard. He's got a yacht. He's got a yacht. <laughs> he got a dinghy. And, and man, and it was in those days when it was my first like real heartbroken heart. Oh uh, yeah, the worst. Uh, you know, I was hearing I was hearing stories like my neighbors would say, "Do you still go out with Shelly?" I'm like, "Shelly, of course. We're living together." And then they go. Dude, I saw her jump out of a cake last night. I am <laughs> oh. not kidding you. Wow. So then I became like this kind of cri obsessed detective. Like, uh, what's worst. that Sting song? I'll, I'll be watching you. Yeah. I'll be watching you. Right. 
This is a pathetic story. I hate to tell you. Oh, look, you, we you all know, have them. You're a macho yeah. dude. I, we relate. But, but check this out, man. I hate to admit this story. This is one of my lowest points. Wait, into the microphone just so we know all right, we all can right. capture your lowest point. <laughs> I rented a pair of roller skates. <laughs> And I knew where she was going to be. She was she was hanging out with the Manhattan Beach crew. Mm -hmm. That Manhattan Beach crew had money, and he she, she was seeing a coke dealer. Mm -hmm. I was a bus boy, right? Who roller skated? Right. I found out. I roller skated up to where they were, <laughs> and there she was, like the queen of Manhattan Beach, holding hands on a fold out. You know, oh, chair. He, mm. she, he was a on the a fold out chair of his own. Mm. She was on her fold out chair. She had all the coke. You know, she was ha she had the coke dealer, mm. the town coke dealer as her under uh, you know boyfriend. You can't. Well, okay. I couldn't can, can I, with it. Let me just jump in for a second. I, I too have lived m much of this life. And you really. Well, my dad wasn't a jeweler, but I know what it's like to have loved and lost, you know. Yeah. And the problem is, is if you're a nice looking guy and you're smart or you're creative, funny, whatever, interesting, you're 22, you can land the 22 year old hottie. But at the end of the day, you got an apartment with roommates, you drive a pickup truck, you have no savings account, no right. credit card, no insurance for your yeah. truck. You don't have anything to offer. No. So even though you guys are kind of physically on par, right. you don't have a pot to I piss have, in. Right. Later on, you're the toast of the town, you're I selling would, millions I, of records. I was that, living in a garage. Oh. I with lived no in a heat, garage. <laughs> her, well, I'm telling you, with her, I found a um, a stove. Like a, I didn't know how to fix up stoves, so I, so I sprayed. I primed the stove. My first meal was uh, I, I got a squash to try <laughs> it out. I so I put the squash in this stove, and you know it starts smoking up. What the fuck's wrong with this thing? You can't prime a, a stove and and then cook on it. Right after, yeah. Well, there's also high temp. It's toxic. There's high temp paint. You yeah. can paint like a manifold. Put that heat on. But that wasn't what you yeah. used. Yeah, yeah, I know. You're so, nobody. I know. She's nobody, but she's hot, and she's he's a coke dealer. She's got a push-up bra uh, like, right. like a milkmaid. You're yeah. crying like, in your roller skates. And she would go, <laughs> and I would watch her serving drinks with the push-up bra, and she had really nice tits. Yeah. You can't and compete. I had a fucking uh, a busboy tray in my hand, you know, getting people water and salt and, you know, just basically you're nothing. But eight years later when Jane's addiction takes off, then you could have skated but into her heart. But she, right. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, <laughs> but she didn't know. You, I Her mean, that's like, the whole those point. are lyrics. And I'm and I'm hurt. I I am ter I'm gonna cry later because my skate friends will never let me live down the fact that I roller skated. <laughs> I roller skated up there to get up there. I don't know what the fuck is wrong with me. I, did, I wasn't thinking straight, man. I was in love. You I know, know what I mean? It's too. It's hormonal. That's why guys kill themselves. I tried to when be undercover. 22. It doesn't work. And I had to get up there. Uh, um, I I was so brokenhearted that I stayed on, and I started. I walked out onto Manhattan Beach has a pier. I walked out onto the pier. I looked out. I looked out to the sea. Bird shits right on my face. <laughs> true, true. Seagull shit right on my nose. <laughs> Oh. While I was crying, oh. and then I tell I tell these strangers that two girls are sitting on a blanket. I go, "Do you mind if I sit with you? I I am in love with this girl. I'm broken heart. Like they let me tell my story for about twenty minutes, and then looked at each other and like, well, we've got to go. And it was getting cold. <laughs> Everybody was leaving. And I, I had to go all the way back, knowing what I had seen. That was uh, that was my first broken heart. So, you know, fellas, you fellas out there that have broken hearts, there is hope. Yeah. Don't ever give up. Or there's a, you, a 
artist with a big ass that you can listen to. Yeah. 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 Well, or not. Perry. Yeah. First off, I'm in. I'm. I'm loving speaking to you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I did not know we had so much in common with you know our construction background and walking on the job site. Yeah, I mean, I could pound a, a nail in in two hits. You know, sixteen penny sinker, eight you know penny I mean? sinker. Yeah, the big ones are sixteen. Uh, both. You could do both. Yeah. Did you have a framing hammer? Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, this was before. Like, now they got nail guns. No, I know. Back then, you Back had Back then, you had a hammer. You had a hammer. A framing hammer with a waffle end on it. Exactly. That's why I so good with the microphone. <laughs> yeah, that's how you can tell the difference between a finish hammer and a framing hammer. Finish is smooth. Right. Yeah, no. Framing's got the waffle stomp yeah. right on the end of it. Yeah, and if you fuck it up, then you got to pull it out, and you're losing time, and you got a crew, and they're looking at you, and, you know, you, you want to be finished... You want to show them that I fucking I dropped every one of them things. So, Perry, I want to extend an offer because I we're out of time because of scheduling today and multiple shows, and it's, it's and we didn't know that you were forced gump. <laughs> we didn't know all this crazy story. I thought you were gonna come in here talk a little Jane's addiction, porno for pyros. We can talk we, about that too. But on, on our next guest for the next show, it's a long story. All right. Way. Now, listen up. I would love you to come back yeah. anytime right. you have time okay. and just pick up right here and then move forward to all the music success. Please. We got the heartache part. Yeah. But uh, then the chapter where you blossom. But you see, I couldn't have written the songs or I, I would not have sounded the way I do had that not happened to me. You yeah, needed that low you need moment. the adversity. You, you, this is what I'm getting at. I will. I, I guess I'm. We're about out of time, so I'll leave you with this. <laughs> All right, but then you come back. I will come you back. Like. I will come back if you invite me. I will. You're invited. The the way it works in life is the best musicians, the best fighters, are always the guys that got their ass whipped, got beat on, got, got you know, broken hearted. You'll get great songs. You'll get great music from those people. So the musicians of today, like I like hanging out with the DIY crew. Porno, we're going out with DIY groups. Mm -hmm. I relate to them. And, uh, you know, I, I, I just like hanging with them because I see myself in them. And, and their sound, that's, what's, that's what the the modern music industry doesn't understand is you you have to let these young men and women develop you, th tell their stories their real stories don't give them bullshit to write to sing you know what i mean that that's why the world that we all feel so hopeless and helpless is because we're not here and we can't relate because it ain't real we're hearing these made up bullshit music. I want to hear, I don't care if they don't sing that well. You know, if, if I can hear the urgency, then I'll play that record over and over. All right. A all good, right. all right. I but we're picking it up for the next time you come in. I completely concur as well. You can go to adamcrow.com for all the live stuff. Porno for Pyros, they are out on tour. They hit the observatory in Orange County. Um, that'll be February 13th. And then uh, Observatory San Diego, Orange County, San Diego, right near old stomping grounds there, February 15th. Ventura Theater, February 17th. Chart House, that's where it was. The Chart House, the famous <laughs> restaurant. It was, on, it was out on the pier. Yeah, yeah. It was the grand opening of Chart House. I got I got the gig as the bus boy. <laughs> Shelly was the the milkmaid. LiveNation.com <laughs> is where you go. Uh, I want to thank Perry Farrell for coming in here, Jim Norton, and uh, Nikki Norton as well. And uh, Perry, seriously, anytime we'll figure it out. We'll come back and we'll do part two, chapter two. All right, uh, Good to see you, my brother. Right. Till next time, Adam Carolla saying mahalo.